Our next story is on teak trees from Western Equatoria State, which are being harvested for export to competitive international markets. A common sight as one drives through Western Equatoria State. Huge trees lining up the length of the roads and towering as though reaching for the skies. This state boasts the majority of Sudan's teak trees, a plant that's taken the lead as Southern Sudan looks at agriculture as an alternative to building its economy after independence on July 9th. The trees, most of which were planted in a number of states in Southern Sudan in the 1940s by British missionaries and colonialists, did not get much attention as Sudan's North and South plunged into two successive wars with the last ending in 2005. The trees are now being harvested and could serve as the next big money maker for southern Sudan. Here in Inzara, if you leave this work, you will stay nothing, you will do nothing. That is why you are working with the cooperative. If you leave this company, you will not see another job. That is the issue. So if we are cutting, we are working nicely. We are cutting almost 50, 40 per day. And then we make cross-cutting all in all. Yeah. If the machine is okay, it's sick and something we are going to cut the trees. One company already cashing in on the cash crop is the Norwegian and British-owned Equatoria Tick Company. They set up operations in 2007 in Western Equatoria, and by 2009, they had exported their first high-quality teak to compete with other world markets. The teak found in Sudan is believed to have originated from Burma. It is known for its durability and ability to withstand the elements. It is resistant to insects and water damage and is mostly used for the building of ships and expensive outdoor furniture. In Africa, other teak plantations can be found in Benin, Cameroon, Ghana, Nigeria, Zambia and Zimbabwe. But the quality found in Sudan is said to be far superior. The soil and climate conditions in the south are perfect for the growing of teak. After 10 years, a teak tree can grow up to about 18 meters high, with a trunk diameter of between 18 to 20 centimeters. The longer it grows, the better the stock of wood. The Mborizanga Reserve is one of five plantations run by the Equatoria Company, totaling to about 2,100 hectares and providing much needed employment for the local community. These furrows you see here, we use rope to measure them and then we are given the seeds. These are put in the water for five days. We then take it out of the water and put them in the nursery beds. Four days later you see the shoots start to germinate. We then take the hoe and sow the seeds in the furrow. Then cast the fertilizers. The young shoots are then covered with a little sun. After about five days, the shoots start to root. The company has a nursery and has replanted over 100 hectares of forest. But some feel that the wages are not enough, especially when a cubic meter of high-grade teak can fetch anywhere between 3,000 and 5,000 U.S. dollars. This is just a hardship, my brother, I'm telling you the truth. Somebody alone like me, no father, no husband, I told the whole day in this work, and reach home at night. For this, you are paid like SDG 120. What if one had a child who is also in school? How would one pay school fees? I've toiled here for four years, and I don't see anything that I did for myself. Within the contract, we say chance would be given to local community to empower them to get employment, to improve their technical ability to run the project, and then to have reasonable pay at the end of the day. This is part of the contract. And then they have to follow it. But if they fail to follow it, that will be a breach in the contract. Over the years, security has been a problem with illegal logging of trees and LRA activity in the area. As a result, armed security is required for the company's loggers to carry out their work. After the trees are logged, 
they are loaded and transported to the company's sewing mill in Anzara. Here, trained personnel work with highly powered frame saws to cut and slice the lumber into precise sizes ready to be shipped. The machines used are so sensitive that the blades on the saws have to be resharpened after every two hours of use. When cut, the wood is then sorted according to different grades. After all the checks are made, it's ready to be shipped, destined for markets in Europe and the Far East. 100% of our products gets exported. And because of the export aspect, uh, we face quite a number of challenges. Uh, major challenges being uh, logistics. We are uh, two weeks travel away from port. So to export is obviously a time, uh, a time issue as well as a financial issue. So it's quite expensive. Um, we obviously have tight deadlines uh, that we must meet uh, for the export market. And uh, any, any interruptions causes major problems because then the next, uh, the, the first delay goes into the next delay and so on. Local entrepreneurs like John Joseph Bomuke are also making good use of the teak. John is also tapping into the available resource to earn a leave-in. He makes furniture and sells it to his neighbors. He hopes to gain more from the factory, using the waste wood that doesn't meet export quality. Since I started this job, there have been some changes. I did get some little money and it is helping me. I have kids in school and also provide for the family. This is the work I do. This is my business. I did not get a job with the government. The money helps me provide for the family at home and to pay school fees for the kids as well as pay our medical bills. With just months before Southern Sudan's independence, the focus needs to shift to rebuilding infrastructure and economic development for its 10 states. Teak is an example of the agricultural potential that the South has, but more attention needs to be given to the sector. Agriculture not only stands to be the backbone of the new nation's economy through its export, but it can also feed its people and provide much needed jobs for the youth. Mm -hmm.